um, I'm going to show how I created um, a square using uh, jcrop. Um, now, with jcrop, I actually found jcrop to be very nice. Um, I really thought it was really done nicely. Um, but as far as their examples go, you can see that like if you want to create a crop view, there's uh, no starting crop. And if you start with a cropping, they do have examples for that. Um, and I can try to find one on here. Um, they have like a thumbnail, they have an advanced view, they have a set select. And the select select is, is great, but it doesn't really give you a way of doing the maximum size square. So what if you wanted a, like, a square that looks kind of like that, right in the center of your image, uh, which I feel like should be like a very common uh, thing to need. Uh, well, jcrop doesn't have it by default, and you have to do a little bit of hacking to, to do it. Um, so um, this is actually what I created. I'm going to refresh the page so you can see kind of my use. I'm creating this thing where you have to drag and drop images into it. So uh, just to drag some images, you can see how it works. Uh, this obviously isn't done yet. It's a work in progress. But when you go and edit it, I have this already cropped to the center. And you can drag and drop. And I make it so I um, everything that J cropped does well. It's all about that set size. And so we can just see it again. We'll open up this one. The set size is the exact uh, square right in the center of the image um, as well as um, it goes from end to end from whatever is smaller. Now let's say I have an image that is a uh, like rectangle or the other rectangle so where the width is more. It also does this. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the code and how I did it and uh, explain kind of how it works. So this is this is my code and um, how it works. I do a bunch of math and it does look a little bit uh, uh, scary at first uh, but when I explain to you it, explain it, it's just some basic algebra. I like to call it conditional algebra. Now I drew this on a whiteboard uh, before um, I did this video uh, to help explain it. Now, we're looking for a few points. Um, I guess I should actually explain a little bit of how uh, jcrop actually works with the set size. So we can go to their manual and look at how they use the set, uh, like set select. You can see right here, to use set select, you're giving an array of x, y, and then x2, uh, and then y2. So pretty much it's the first corner and then it's the uh, last corner. In other words, you're giving it this image, this number, and this number. So we need to find the point here, and we need to find the point there. So in my little description, uh, my first objective is really to find this point and then I need to find this point. To find this point, uh, we know that if the width is smaller than the height, let's just do that first, we know that the x value is going to be a 1. I mean, not a 1, a 0. So we get that. So I um, do that in my code. and Let's actually go into the code right here and have them lined up. You can see that since um, if the width is more um, than the height, uh, if the uh, if the width is more than the height, uh, which is like right here, uh, or actually no, I mean sorry, the height would be, have to be more than the width. Um, like this, you can see that uh, I do that at the very end. So the x is going to be equal to 0. 
which is right here. Now the y value, the first y value, is going to be a little trickier to find. So I actually have to do a little bit of algebra. Now we know that the y on this side is going to be the same as the y on this side. So that is kind of half the work. And whether I find this over here or over there, it doesn't really matter. So to find the center point is really easy. All we do is an, the height divided by two. And how we find the width is a w or a width divided by two. And the reason why you do this is because the since it's the square, this side and this side right here are the same or equal to w. So all I have to do is know that this is a width minus two. Now, how do I get the point over here? I do a height divided by two minus a width divided by two. And over here, it's just the opposite. We just have to add that width divided by two right over here. Now, uh, just some basic simplification. Since they're both over two, we can actually put the whole function over two and I get the h plus or minus w and converting that over to some JavaScript, you can see that right in here, I just do, this is my w, this is my h, and I divide the whole thing by two. And to get the other one, I just add it and I do the same thing down here. Now the reason why I have some conditionals is first off, if they're equal to each other and we already have a square, that means we just have to select the entire thing. So we don't have to do much math at all. We just have a zero, zero, and we have whatever the width is, whatever the height is, and select that. And so that gives us the square. Now if, it's, if the width is more, we're gonna do the same thing as this diagram, but switched over. So instead of uh, H right here, it'd be a W minus the height. Um, so you do everything kind of backwards. Um, now, when I input these, is I, I just take these variables that I created over here, and I put them into the slut select. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and the end result, just so you can, you can see it again, Sorry about that. Um, just so you can see it again. It just creates a square. And let's actually create a new one. And you can see that it creates as the biggest square possible. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. I hope that helps. Um, I'll be sure to post that uh, code uh, at the bottom of this video, or at least have a link to it. Talk to you soon. Bye.